I'm still seeing people on Facebook and stuff that, I don't know, I, I get a little irritated in a way. I can understand um, their um, their knowledge, uh, and and I respect what they, you know, think they know and what they believe, uh, but I don't totally agree with what they're saying, But and I'm talking, you know, paranormal. This is part two of what I said a while back. But uh, I'm going to give you four stories, I believe four stories, that is going to tell you something different from what I've learned. Four stories. And this is way off compared to what these people think and believe. That's coming up. Stick around. And now we interrupt, disrupt, and crash this station. The man fighting for peace, his legacy, truth in a sea of stupid. Filtered for your sarcastic enjoyment, go Getter. And by the way, like, share, subscribe. Give me a shout, do something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have enough viewers. You know, I'm, I'm kind of used to it. Uh, I'm not the kind of person that a lot of people agree with. Uh, when it comes to these sort of things my entire life. But, um, and there's a reason for it. Everybody seems to believe the same thing and reacts to the same thing, walks and talks the same way. And, um, but I, I don't seem to when it comes to this. Never have. Um, I've experienced what they've experienced. I mean, I've seen, witnessed certain things happen. And I've got plenty of more stories to tell, uh, but only have time for a few. So uh, this is just one of those things that show you the difference. Okay, so what I am um, not completely irritated with, just a little bothered by, is when I see the excitement of seeing a friend on a TV show uh, when it comes to this, or seeing the excitement of people posting pictures of the same uh, orb things, or seeing the excitement of people saying they got an EVP of a voice of a, a child or a voice of a something, or the, you know, I caught the video of a door closing and so on and so forth. You know what I mean. And it always seems to be years and years of this stuff. And I always seem to um, react like, you know, here we go again. And it makes me think that maybe their mind is, maybe they're like trained monkeys. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe it's, um, I'm not here to insult. I'm just saying maybe they're being trained that way. Maybe um, Satan or whatever um, demons have them, um, you know, like wolves in sheep's clothing. They're uh, reacting to the same thing. They have them uh, in this certain box and uh, seem to have captured them in a way where they can't, uh, you know, they got control of their uh, situation, control of their minds, control of their likes, control of their emotions, complete control over their entire um thing when it comes to this sort of stuff but if you go outside the box things will be a little bit different things will change uh, and you'll start seeing things in a different way now i have experienced what they've experienced um but and and i've been had the same fears and and the same reactions and and all that i have the same things on tape and all that but I have also had, outside the box, have seen things that no human being after death can possibly uh, create. I, I, I can't say, because you're going to argue with me and say, well, how do you know this? Where did you hear this? Where is your evidence? Well, and I always ask these same people, where is yours? Where is your evidence that uh, what you say about your grandmother passing away and you have uh, voice voices of this how do you know that it's not an imitation of her voice uh, something imitating her or uh, you know the same person a long time ago that said had a feeling which really is not anything to me 
Um, it, it can go both ways. But here are the stories I'm going to tell you that is it possible. And I'm going to ask you these questions after you hear the story. First one. And I'll have more later. If you want them, um, let me know in the comments. First one, I had a girlfriend. Really? <laughs> no, believe it or not. <laughs> um, she I, that I lived with for 10 years. She didn't believe in it. She didn't disbelieve in it. She didn't believe. She didn't care either way. And, and nothing really affected her. Um, we've lived in a place that had problems, okay? Uh, but these problems didn't affect her for some reason. They didn't uh, bother her. They didn't uh, do anything out of the ordinary to this person until later on. I don't know why, uh, but everyone else in the house was affected by it. Everyone that came there and saw it was affected by it but her, which I found really interesting. Uh, but later on, before we moved, uh, a few things did happen to her. First one, and I'll ask you this after I tell you the story. She goes and takes a shower. Now, there is a um, shower, uh, like most showers, you have a shelf in the shower that um, you can put your bottles of shampoo uh, and things like that on the shelf right there next to the shower head. She goes in there. But she has a habit of uh, most people like me pour it in their hand when you wash your hair and rub it on your head. She had a habit of pouring the bottle on her head, um, which is, you'd spend a lot of money doing it. But she would pour the bottle in her head, put it down, do whatever with her hair, rinse it off, pour the conditioner in her head, put it down, rinse it off, whatever. This is what she tells me, okay? She comes out of the shower and tells me, there's only two things that happened to her, and this was one. Uh, the other one I'll tell you later. She comes out of the shower and tells me that the bottle disappeared. And I say, well, what do you mean it disappeared? She said she picked it up, put it on her head, like she always does, and set it down within arm's length. And after she did all that, she got her eyes, whatever, she goes to grab the bottle, and it's not there. She, what you know, opens her eyes and whatever with her eyes. She looks on the shelf, and it disappears. She looks on the bottom of the shower. It's not there. She looks around the bathroom. It's not there. To this day, as far, I haven't spoken to her in quite a few years, but to this day, uh, we've lived together maybe two, three years after that. But as far as I know, to this day, even after that, we have never found that bottle. It was not in the shower. It was not on the floor of the shower. It was not in the bathroom. It wasn't anywhere else in the house. That bottle completely vanished in the thin air. Now I ask you, is that human ability? Can a dead person do that? Steal something and just let it vanish in the thin air. My concern is, and this has happened to me before. Uh, I've had things like that vanish. Not um, a lot, but it has happened. My concern is, one day, will it show up again? Will it pop up out of, out of nowhere? Maybe in the same bathroom. Other people were living there. Maybe in her bathroom. Maybe in mine. I wouldn't remember what the bottle was if it did. But there were other things that disappeared that I know I would freak out if they did show up. And keep in mind that, one, they knew that she would have her eyes closed and would grab for that bottle. She does it more than once. And obviously they knew that. Because for me and some other people, I only do it one time. I don't do it two, three times, and that's it. So obviously they've seen her do that before. That was a trick they were playing on her. Two, it made her very mad. That was playing with her emotions. She does not like it. Um, well, back then, she did not like it when people would take her stuff like that and things would vanish. She got mad that her yearbook was dis would disappear once and that was other circumstances. Uh, 
a bowling ball of hers that was thrown away. And she was very particular about her own things. And she went on about it for a while. Um, so they knew inside there were things that would bother her. And this was one of them. So obviously uh, they knew this. And this was a way to get to her because nothing else did. But I, like I said, I ask you, do you think a human being that passed away could do this? And if so, you think so, where do you get your sources from? There is no human that I know of that can create that kind of power. But a demon can. And I say this because if God gave him the ability to do certain things... Uh, it is possible that they can do that because there have been uh, paranormal experts that have uh, witnessed or have had studies where they've been to places where things have disappeared and reappeared. Uh, I've been to a conference once uh, or a lecture where one uh, well-known, uh, I don't remember his name now, but well, had a, um, a degree at a college and he was studying strange things like this that was going on not that it was paranormal demonic or anything like that but he would go around uh, studying weird things that were happening and uh, disappearing objects was one of the things that he studied and he was going around trying to uh, he went way beyond the paranormal and was now into objects vanishing and, and reappearing and he said he had been to a house in a basement once where he was seeing things that were over 100 years old just showing up out of nowhere in a basement, like nails on the floor, watches, that sort of thing that he could not explain. So it is beyond the ghost phenomena. Um, maybe it's scientific, but that's something when you're in a house where you have problems, you have to look at. Second thing, Keith Johnson. Now, I had a girl once that I knew uh, when I was deeply into this field uh, that was having problems. She was having is issues uh, at her house. Uh, they were, according to her, attacking her, attacking her children. She was constantly having problems. And some days she would call me up and her problems would be worse. And some days her problems would not be as bad. I was once uh, having her do a live feed uh, that I was watching on my computer once and as I started to uh, read scriptures uh, and I believe it was Psalm 91 her laptop lid shut by itself and uh, turned the camera off and completely shut the uh, feed off you think they don't watch on the internet they do this is another sign that tells me and it's a little more than just human beings that died now I was uh, off and on talking to Keith Johnson every once in a while. And he not only was um, a demonologist, but he was also, I believe, a, uh, uh, a minister, a licensed minister. But I'm not sure if, if that's completely true, uh, but that's what I heard. Uh, but uh, I got on the phone. She called me up one time, and we were having serious issues. And I got on the phone three-way calling with Keith Johnson. Now, some of you in the field know who he is because um, he's pretty well known. Uh, I don't usually like to uh, talk about that sort of thing um, because, you know. Um, but I called her up on three-way. She was having issues, and she was discussing it with him. So as they were talking on the phone, and he began to pray for her, she, you know, I was standing out in my driveway, and this is a little hard to, it's weird. It's a weird thing. Even people around me who I tell this to say that, you've never told me that story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it, it just goes along with all the other weird stories. As I'm standing in my driveway, it was night. There's not a cloud in the sky. There's no, no clouds. It was stars out. It was a warm night. It was not hot. It was not cold. There was no storm coming in. There was not a cold front coming in. There was nothing going on. As he was praying, 
and it got into his prayer longer and deeper, wind started to pick up. Now, I'm not talking just a regular breeze or wind. We're talking harsh wind that came in. It was something that I haven't seen um, unless it's a storm. Something I haven't seen unless it's a violent storm. This wind that picked up uh, was so violent that the tree that is in my yard, the 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 branches on the tree and the leaves in the around the street that I was living on, were nearly um, blowing, touching the ground, the branches and the leaves and everything. That's how windy it was. I mean, it was extremely windy, and it went on for his entire prayer. It got stronger and stronger as the as he went on and we were talking on the phone and I was sitting there thinking because I didn't want to interrupt this is the weirdest thing that I've ever seen because like I said there was no uh, and you can call it science or whatever but I have never in my lifetime this is just from experience in my lifetime I have never seen wind pick up unless there was a cold front unless there was a storm coming in unless there was winter unless there was a tornado it, it was the kind of winds that you would see uh, around that, you know, not a complete tornado because, you know, that could be worse. But it was the kind of winds that you see only in storms, uh, maybe hurricanes, that sort of thing. It wasn't strong enough to blow me off my feet uh, because I was still standing there. But it was something where I was looking at the trees and everything going, what the heck is that all about? Well, as he was you know, talking, and as soon as he say amen and all that, it stopped like that. The wind just stopped, and it died, and it went exactly back to what it was. Um, there was no clouds again. Uh, there was no clouds before it or during. Um, it wasn't cold. It wasn't hot, and the wind wasn't cold. The wind wasn't hot. It was blowing me back pretty you know, but it didn't knock me off my feet. But it was something, like I said, I've never seen in my lifetime. And it was a little odd that it started picking up when he started talking and it stopped when he finished. To this day, I've never been able to understand that. Now I ask you again, is it possible that a person passes away can do this? Is it possible that a person has the power to do this? This was uh, the fear of God kind of power. This was the kind of power that woke me up and said, Hey, do you know what the hell you're doing? It was a kind of power, hard to explain. It was a kind of power like saying, uh, trying to get my attention kind of power. Trying to wake me up kind of power. One of those things that was like a reminder. Who you're dealing with kind of power. And whether it's a true religion, false religion, I don't know. But one thing's for sure, it did get my attention. And um, it was one of those things that told me, you know, you better wake up. So that's the second story. Third story, going back to that house again. And I've said this a long time ago, but I don't know if it's on YouTube or not. But I've talked about this on my radio shows and stuff. I have trained myself because I have been in this for so long that I know that in this field, and I have had this experience my entire life, in this field, we tend to see things happen out of the corner of our eyes. Things that go by, people looking at us, um, seeing shadow people, whatever the case is. We see things out of the corner of our eyes. I don't know if it's the oval shape or the reason behind it, why it doesn't happen in front of you, it always happens on the side of you in the corner of your eyes. So I train myself to not react to it. Now, I'm not always uh, perfect at it, but I have done very good at it at times where I've looked at things out of the corner of my eye and sat there and watched it. One thing about this house is there was a computer room. We call it a computer room. It's actually an office. But every, you know, 
area of the house was affected, especially upstairs in the loft area of the house, would have problems. More upstairs than anything. And I figured out by doing my own studies, it was mostly it would mostly happen in the dark. I would turn on the lights upstairs and turn them off downstairs in a certain spot or a certain room and we'd have problems in that room. Obviously it loved dark areas. But never would do things in this office. It would do it outside the window because as I'm sitting here, there was a window kind of like like that is right there where you see in the window. Kind of like that right next to me. And it wouldn't do anything inside the office. It would do it outside the window. Uh, we, there was a, two doors to that room, one going into the living room, one going into the bathroom. Uh, it would swing the door open in the living room. It would swing the da- bathroom door open. Uh, one time I blocked the uh, living room door with a you know uh, basket, clothes basket full of books and it kicked the door open. Uh, so it would do things outside but not inside. So I'm sitting there and I'm on the computer and uh, this is just one of those situations Uh, I've had many in this office well outside the office I would have problems but I'm sitting there and I and it's in the country so you can see the driveway um, and my car is parked and it's pretty good walking distance to the dirt driveway and it's three acres of land so um, you know it's pretty wide open and the neighbors far away uh, probably couple of football fields maybe um so i'm sitting there doing what i do on my computer and i can see out of the corner of my eye something two red looking eyes above my car now it's at night i know where my car's parked i know how high it is it was above my car there is no trees near my car there's no it probably had to have been more than six feet tall And it's red. The eyes were red. And it was blinking. And like someone was staring at me. And I've made myself trained to where I'm looking at the corner of my eye. But I'm not going to look directly at it. And I'm talking to myself. And I'm thinking the whole time. This went on for uh, maybe three to five minutes. It seemed like a very long time. And it was long enough for me to talk to myself in these words should i get up and go get somebody so they can see it too will they be able to see it if i come back here uh if i come back here will it still be there i wish i had some kind of camera or something i could take a picture of it is there some way i'm trying to figure out the entire time a way i can capture this where someone else can see this and i am In this conversation in my head, the whole time I can see these red eyes staring at me above my car, and they were blinking. And then I decided there is no way on this earth I'm going to be able to capture this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out for sure if this is real, whatever. So what I said was I'm going to jerk my head and look at it as fast as I can and see if I can look directly at it because I know I'm going to see it out of the corner of my eye, but can it, is it possible I'm going to be able to look directly at it? And this is the whole time I'm talking, you know, to myself. And I'm just sitting there acting like I'm ignoring it, but I'm talking to myself. And I said, okay, I'm going to count to three and I'm going to look at it, straight at it with my eyes and try to catch it with my full eyes. And I counted to three, and I said, one, two, three. And I looked right at it, and as soon as I looked right at it, bloom, it went off like a pair of lights, like a, like, you know, like you turn a light off. Those two red eyes, I'm telling you, as soon as I looked at it, it switched off. They went black. After that, they never came back on. Um, i never seen them again out of the corner of my eye. I went outside to check around my car. There was nothing there. 
I went all over the place to see if someone was standing out there. There was no one out there. Uh, I've tried to debunk it and never been able to debunk that. It was too high to be an animal, too high to be a cat. It, like I said, it was over six feet tall. It was over the roof of my car. So it had to be, whatever it was, was tall, was extremely tall. And these eyes, I have never seen red eyes like that ever in my lifetime. Uh, I have never been able to um, recreate it, and I've never been able to uh, um, see it again. Um, it's not the first time I've seen things out of the corner of my eye. I've sat in the computer room once and uh, seen somebody out of the corner of my eye open the door where the door was cracked open, and I can see someone staring at me through the crack of the door and walk off and i got up to chase it to see who it was and no one in the house was awake so i've seen things out of the corner of my eye that i've trained myself to look at through the corner of my eye i've seen people staring at me that way um it's kind of a secret of mine <laughs> so i'm giving up one of my secrets i've seen things like that happen before but nothing like this ever uh, and it was blinking. It was blink, blink like that. So um, I haven't been able to explain that. Um, and the fourth and final thing, this one's interesting. And by the way, the reason they I've learned how to do my own personal study of it, of what was in the house, the reason they didn't go into that computer room is because it was filled with church literature from a church I used to go to. Books, pamphlets, uh you know, magazines, uh, Bible notes, uh, tapes, videos, the whole office. Uh, there was a bookshelf in there filled with church literature. There was baskets filled with church literature. There was stuff in that it was almost like used for storage for that uh, particular thing. And there was a humongous amount of it in there. So uh, as I tried to figure out for a while why it wouldn't go in there. I stood there one time, looked around, and then I realized what was in there. It kind of gave me an idea also of what was uh, actually in the house. Finally, the fourth thing, and I'm sorry this video is long again, but my radio shows used to be two hours, so someone asked me to go to an investigation once because they wanted to see if it was demonic or not. I don't think they really believe me when I, you know, things that I've uncovered. Because um, they never asked me again. So I assumed either they didn't want to hear it, they didn't believe it themselves. Um, I don't know. Doesn't matter. But they had asked me to go to this house. These people were having problems and they were going to investigate and they wanted me to be there to see if it was demonic. Now, I already know it is. Uh, but... I'm going to, because there are certain things that happen that um, tell me that they have problems. Because not only do they have doors closing, hearing voices, but other things. Um, so I would, because it already is. So, so as I was, um, and I've been to every room in this house except the kitchen. And I'm telling you, I've not been in that kitchen. Um, I was going outside before this was around the time that I was smoking I've quit already uh, a few years ago but I was standing outside smoking and I always kept my box of marble reds in my front pocket I don't put them in my back pocket I don't put them in my jacket I've always had the lighter and the marble box because I've always smoked marble reds in a box in my front pocket and I've developed this habit of doing it for years because, you know, worked in the grocery business. I didn't want to sit in them, forgetting about them. I had an apron covering them so it wouldn't get wet. And then that's the re another reason why I had a box. Several reasons. It was always protected better in my front pocket. Um, and definitely didn't lose them. Uh, so I was outside smoking. And the entire time I'm thinking... My focus was on this house being de demonic. That was my focus. And sometimes I talk to myself. 
Um, sometimes I'll stand out there and I go, even though you think you're going to do this, you're not fooling me. Uh, you know, this is blah, blah, blah. I'll be talking to God or I'm talking to whatever's in the house and which was stupid to talk to whatever's in the house uh, in several different occasions um, because I had been on investigations where I've said, you know, uh, you're not fooling me. I know what you are and I know what your plan is, what your what your whole idea is, and you can fool everyone around here, but you're not fooling me, um, which was a stupid thing to say. I'm not challenging it like Ghost Adventures, uh, which is stupid, but I tend to talk, and I'm standing outside smoking. And I said to myself, I remember saying these words, I don't care what you do to these people. You can manipulate them. Uh, fool them, uh, deceive them, whatever. But you're not getting to me. Um, I don't care what you think you can do, but you're not getting to me. Um, I know you have your ways, but uh, it won't work with me. You're not killing me. You're not going to take me away from God. There's nothing you can do to me to um, mess me up. So don't even think about it. Okay, this is what I'm saying when I'm standing outside by myself, by the way, smoking. So somehow my hand goes down and hits my, uh, not my pocket with my marble reds, but the pocket, the other pocket on the other side of my pants. I hit it and I thought, okay, what the heck is that in my pocket? And I fill my other pocket and I pull out my cigarettes and I'm like, I don't, Okay, this is mine, but what is this? And I pull, reached in my pocket, and I pulled out another pack of cigarettes. They were Marlboro Lights. And I'm thinking, where the hell did these come from? It was in my front pocket. They came out of nowhere. So I go in, and I open them up, and look, there's a lighter inside the pack of Marlboro Lights. I go inside the house, and I ask them, Hey, uh, do you guys have a pack of Marlboro Lights. Do you guys smoke a pack of Marlboro Lights? And the woman that owns the house said she does. Uh, it should have a lighter. And I said, is this box yours? And she said, should have a lighter in the box. And sure enough, uh, the when I opened it, the, there was her light. The lighter was inside the box of Marlboro Lights. And I said, okay. I said, where was this box? She said it was in the kitchen on the counter. I said, I didn't go into the kitchen. So where the hell did this box of Marlboro Lights, how did they get in my pocket? Because I didn't take them. I didn't go into the kitchen, and I definitely wouldn't pick them up thinking they were mine because, hey, they're Marlboro Lights. It's a white box. Mine are Marlboro Reds. It's a red box. I put them in my pocket, front pocket. I do not leave them on the counter. I do not leave them anywhere but in my front pocket. So... How in the world did they get in my front pocket? Because I know I was never in that kitchen. And I definitely wouldn't mistake them picking them up. Uh, so they all looked at me like I was crazy or making it up or whatever. And I, and I thought to myself, well, maybe they're trying whatever's in this house. Uh, since I said there's no way you can get to me. Hmm. That's a response. Maybe they're going to say, maybe they're saying uh, they can get to me by uh, people thinking I'm stealing from them, whatever. And I hope these people don't think I'm a thief. Uh, but if I was, I wouldn't give them back. Um, and I'm not a liar, so I hope that's not what they're trying to do to me. And later on, I decided, I figured it out. And I said, well, it's not the fact that you got the cigarettes. It's not the fact that you took them. It's nothing like that that they're ever going to think about you that way that you took them or none of that stuff. They're answering you by saying, we can get to you by smoking. We can get to you. This is how we can get to you uh, going against God uh, because your body is your temple. Smoking is not something that was, um, it was against the church that I went to. Uh, it was one of the rules that they believed in, no smoking. 
uh, nothing that can desecrate your body like that or destroy it. Uh, it was against the rules. Uh, and I still believe in that. I just had an addiction. Um, so uh, they weren't saying by stealing. They were saying this is how we can get you. This is how we can uh, kill you. This is how we can uh, get you to go against God and not follow his rules. This is how he, you can make him angry or whatever. This is how we can do it to you. That's what I figured out later on. I have a habit of not figuring things out until it's too late or time has gone by. I've always had that problem. Um, I've had a few people take advantage of me that way, scumbags. Uh, but um, that's, uh, that's how they got to me. So I tell you again, after all these words, after all these stories, do you think it's even possible for a human being to die and do this to me? Do you think it's even possible for a human being to die and create these kind of control or create these kind of powers? I don't think so. I certainly doubt it. I don't deal with the same thing that Facebook keeps claiming. Hey, I've seen a ghost in this grandma. I don't deal with when I get EVPs, they're cursing at me. When I get EVPs, it's vulgar language. When I get EVPs, it's threats. I don't get, hee hee, I'm the little girl named Kenna. I don't get all that, okay? I have years ago, but I don't believe that anymore. I don't, I, I don't get that. So they're trying other ways of doing it. But in the end, I'm telling you, when you go on Facebook this is all you paranormal enthusiasts out there that are trying to get a rush. When you go on Facebook and you're so excited about your friends catching an EVP or being on a paranormal show or whatever, keep in mind that there's a lot more to it than just hearing a voice or a door closing or hearing footsteps. There's a hell of a lot more to it. There's a heck of a lot more things out there uh, than you can possibly imagine. They're not what you think they are. And you need to go outside the box because you're all being trained like monkeys and they're just manipulating you into believing all the same stories. And for some reason, you keep thinking that this is what it is and, you know, all that. But I can guarantee you, uh, a lot of you, that there are things that happen to me that never happen to you. Uh, I have seen none of you. Uh, this is why I stopped watching ghost hunter shows and things like that because I never see them go through the things that I went through. I never see them con being confronted like I've been confronted. Uh, I've never seen them being sent messages like that um, or things disappearing like that. I've never seen anything like that with these people. Uh, so keep that in mind. And believe me, when you have it in here, because just because you think it in your brain and you say it in your mouth, they know what is inside of you. They know what you truly believe because you can say what you believe on the outside and they'll know on the inside what you really believe. You can say that you're into cats when you really hate cats in your heart and you love dogs. Uh, in your heart but you say you hate dogs in your mind and you tell people this they already know this what is true and what is a lie they already know all this stuff you to stand there and lie about it to the public and you make up all this stuff it's bs because they know more than any human more than any dead human trust me they know i've had people not hang out with me because what they've seen Accuse me of being in the occult. Accuse me of being uh, into Satan worshiping. It is not true. Uh, I've always believed in God. I've always talked to God. I've always uh, been involved in the Bible. I've always read the Bible. I've always been close since I can remember with God uh, because I've had problems. Way before, as far as I can remember, five years old. I'm just telling you, uh, I've, uh, my dealings were way beyond your dealings, and my life goes way beyond what you've 
people that, ooh, he's got a, you know, dead chicken that's balking <coughs> on his EVPs. <coughs> it goes way beyond that. So think about that next time uh, you decide to be excited about the field. It's not as exciting as you think. And before you know it, something bad may happen to you. And uh, this is why I don't think it's human because it's not possible. Um, it's totally, totally uh, demonic. But I've been accused of <laughs> of things that is not true. And it's not surprising to me that they would put that in your head to believe that. So, but I don't care because I know what I believe in. I know what I trust in. And I trust in God. Um. It's like someone told me a long time ago, um, bl- trust not in the word of man, but trust in the word of God. <laughs> we all should do that. When you leave, think about this. There is a reason why they don't want you hearing what I have to say. There is a reason why you have so many people that you're involved in the field that seem to have the same issues the same doors, the same walking, the same thing, the same orbs. There's a reason why you have all that. And I'm just not that popular. There's a reason for that. You ever think maybe because they don't want you to hear the truth? Think about it. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope uh, you like, share, and subscribe. Um, Please listen to the station 24 hours a day. I need more listeners. Let me know what you think. Uh, Until tomorrow, next time, all the links are in the bottom. Um, See ya. Hey, everybody, don't forget to check out Reverse 96 FM on TuneIn, Streama, and now InternetRadio.com.